Hi, my name is Mike Ward. I'm the Global Director of Content in Former Pharma Insights. I'm here at the Biotech Showcase in San Francisco. Uh, it's a meeting which runs alongside the JP Morgan meeting where all the great and good, all the movers and shakers of pharma and biotech you know, meet on an annual basis um, and look at do deals, etc. I'm actually, uh, I've been joined by uh, Mark Cohen, who's the executive chairman and co-founder of C4 Therapeutics. This company is so new, so freshly baked, that Mark doesn't even have a business card uh, as yet, but you've managed to do uh, well, you, a big financing right. and uh, a deal. Right. So, yeah. who, who, who is C4 Therapeutics? Great, well first, it's a pleasure to be here. So C4 Therapeutics is a, is a brand new company. We announced that last Thursday. And uh, we raised uh, $73 million in our Series A. And right out of the gate, we also announced a strategic partnership with our first flagship partner, Broche Pharmaceuticals, uh, in a deal that's worth uh, potentially over $750 million. So we're a spin out of the Dana-Farber Cancer Institute, uh, which is part of, uh, of Harvard. And our, our co my co-founders come from uh, Harvard Medical School, uh, and uh, we, we are bringing to market what we think is a, is a paradigm shift in, in how to make drugs. Okay, so could you, well, yeah, what, what is it that, that you guys think you've got a solution to? What was the problem that you guys think you've got a solution to? Sure, so the approach that, that, uh, that we are taking, in, in which we think is, is really very different in terms of how drugs have been made to date, is that uh, we have uh, our team, our scientific team, has come up with a way to degrade proteins by tricking the, the body's natural mechanism, which is a professional machinery that has evolved over millions of years called the ubiquitin proteasome system, or UPS. And we have figured out, in fact, Jay Bradner, one of our co-founders, figured this out, was the first in 2010 to come up with an all-chemical strategy on, on how to take advantage of the system and target it towards any disease-causing protein of our choice. So that's extremely powerful because, as you know, proteins are involved in almost every disease. Uh, and so if we can degrade, that is destroy, as opposed to inhibit, uh, we, we can get to the root cause and, and, and cure many diseases that today aren't even touchable. So it's what it searches out and destroys rogue proteins? Exactly, let me explain how it works. So. The, the, proteasome, the ubiquitin proteasome system today has two components. It has one component which is basically a trash labeler. So all it does is it looks for misfolded protein, defective proteins, and it slaps a trash label on it, like a post-it note. Yeah. And then it's got a second piece which is basically the cleanup crew. And it takes anything that has the label, takes it to this thing called the proteasome, which is just like the garbage disposal at home. It's cylindrical and it only allows things that have the trash label in it, chemically degrades them, chops them up, spits them out into your bloodstream, they go through your kidneys and out they go. So that, that's the professional machinery. So what we have done at, at C4 uh, is figured out how we can take those trash labelers and essentially trick them into labeling a protein of our choice. And then we let, we let the body do the heavy lifting. You know, all we have done here is the matchmaking. And, and, and so it's, it's beautiful in its simplicity, but extremely powerful because you're letting the body do the hard work. Right, so what sort of proof of principle have you already identified? So, so there's been extensive work both uh, in vitro and in vivo. So we've been able to take cancer cell lines in mice, for example, and we've, we've been able to show how we can degrade those cancers uh, incredibly quickly, as in hours. And, and so, so we're able to, to, to show and validate. Uh, so, so we have exemplified data that, that, can, that will you know, demonstrate that this actually works on a variety of different diseases. And we think we can extend that to, to many others. Right, okay. So, and that was the, the sort of the science and the IP that you were then able to go to attract inv investors into the company. Exactly. exactly. Okay. So who, who are those investors? So we're a little different than most companies. Uh, so we're, we're not what I would call your typical VC company. We're, we're an angel syndicate. So, so uh, we mostly have uh, a group of angels. Uh, we have a crossover fund, a Cormorant Asset Management. Uh, I'm, my brother and I are the lead investors with our fund Cobro Ventures, but it's, but it, it's an it's a angel approach uh, to uh, investing in companies. Right, okay, and um, so, 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 so this, this group of 
sort of you know, syndicate of, of, of angel investors. They put in, how much did you say? So we raised $73 million. $73 million. In our Series A, highly oversubscribed. So what, what has the company, what did C4 Therapeutics tell those investors uh, the use of proceeds will be? So uh, the strategy of the company is, is to uh, have two different revenue streams. So we're going to have one revenue stream, which is our own proprietary targets. So we'll be going after targets that will make a meaningful difference in different diseases. But we're all, our, our, our other part of our big stream is going to be our partnering. So we are part, our first partner, Roche, for example, we're going to be going after individual targets. So it's a target-based strategy. And so we, our plan is to have multiple partners where we, where we go after uh, these different targets and then we have the standard things that you would get, upfront fee, uh, milestone base, commercialization, and royalties. So it's very exciting for us because we're taking lots of shots on goal. Right, okay, so could you sort of describe therefore uh, as, as much as you can the, sort of the details of the deal you, you've, you've got with Roche? Sure, so we're not disclosing the financial pieces, but uh, it's a, it's a multi-target deal. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, uh, we, we uh, are, are starting that right away. We're in fact moving in in two days to our new facility in, in Cambridge, in Kendall Square. Uh, and, uh, and so uh, it's, it's your typical, uh, you know, you have some, some, as I mentioned, some upfront piece, then we work together collaboratively. Uh, we get to, uh, you know, these typical phases at which point they have the option of, of taking over uh, the devel clinical development and, and then onward towards uh, commercialization. So, and Roche chooses the targets? Uh, Roche, uh, uh, it's, it's a joint, joint thing, but uh, Roche obviously has the, tr the final say on the targets. Right, okay, so, so, the, so the relationship, I mean, so it's a joint, so are you co-developing? I mean, do you, does C4 Therapeutics still retain some rights? Well, we're licensing it, so, so, so when we license the IP, you know, it's still a C C4 uh, IP, but we will we'll license it to that particular. So it'll be exclusive to that partner, right. and that's the way we'll work. That's the best way when you have multiple partners right. is to to maintain some level of exclusivity at the target level. Okay, so to that partner, to that target, right? To that geographical area, that it's well, irrespective of geog geography. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, so uh, as you sort of say, it, you know, the the, the the financing and the and the deal were almost contemporaneous. Um, right. And that was a week ago. Right. So, uh, how how did Roche know about the fact that you know you guys were actually looking at this? And was it a, was it a coincidence, or did they actually have have uh, have a part to play in, in in you know a raising you being able right. to raise the money, or was you having the money enough to attract Roche? That's yeah, a very good question. So, they weren't involved in the early stages of the company formation, but, but because if you look at our co-founders, in addition to Dr. Bradner, Bradner, who's now becoming president of Novartis Institutes, uh, we have Ken Anderson, who's world-renowned expert in myeloma and protein degradation, and, and we have uh, Nathaniel Gray, who's a world expert in kinase emission and drug discovery. They're known all over the world, so it, it was certainly no surprise that uh, Roche and others uh, would have uh, a desire to work with us because it's coming out of right. their labs. So, so uh, getting known was certainly no problem, but uh, uh, very early on, a number of partners uh, expressed a significant interest because we think this is a paradigm shift. This is a different way of tackling problems. So for example, there's certain drugs today that, that just certain diseases, I should say, that just can't be addressed. You know, pancreatic cancer, for example. There, there's certain things that you just know are a death sentence, and that's because those targets are considered undruggable. Well, we hope to change that. Right, okay. Now, um, yeah, so as, as, as we look forward, you mentioned also that you know one arm is to obviously do the sort of the partnering, right? Uh, and the other one is to actually sort of develop your own own, own programs. Right. It's a new company. Right. Uh, how many people do you have actually you know boots on the you know on the ground at mm -hmm. the moment, and how do you see that uh, developing or evolving over over the coming months and, and years? So so we're a discovery company. So that means you know we have to have. The, the chemistry labs, the biology, the biochemistry. And so uh, we, we are moving out fast uh, to hire people. Uh, the team is, is, is growing as we speak. And, uh, and so the, the, this, this is a company that will have some level of critical mass uh, to do discovery and to work with our partners. So uh, I, I would anticipate that uh, you know, in the next couple of years, you're, you're, you're gonna see, see us with a sizable presence.
And the, how are we funding that? Well, we're funding that, you know, part of that is coming from uh, the $73 million that we raised, and that's going to help move our initial targets through into the clinic, but, uh, but the partners are also contributing uh, funds up front too and, and, and as we go along. So, so we think that the business model uh, is extremely sound and that's what our partner, that's what our investors found extremely attractive, yeah. that we can be cash flow positive uh, very quickly. Yeah, I was going to sort of say this, the 73 million, you know, how much runway do you anticipate that giving you? That'll definitely get us, get our compounds into the clinic. Which is, uh, what which, sort which, of timeline are we talking about? Which then? is in the next two years. So, so we're not your typical Series A. You know, normally Series A you hear like four or five years to, before yeah. you get to the clinic. We're, we're in the two year time frame. And, and, and the bandwidth that you have for doing additional deals? Right. So, uh, how, how many deals do you anticipate doing? Or how many programs do you think you can have running in parallel uh, with partners? Uh, well, we, th we, we feel comfortable that we could have uh, you know, three, four key partners that we work with uh, on this target-based strategy. Uh, and uh, we're, we're quickly making our way towards that. And then, then it becomes a, an execution challenge in terms of we just need to be heads down and, and start making drugs. Right. Well, I mean, there can't be many you know, companies within the, sort of the first week has you know, uh, done such a huge right. Series A and then also you know, launched, uh, well, landed a blue chip um, uh, a development partner. So, uh, so, so congratulations on that. Thank and, you. Uh, thanks very much for, for spending the time uh, yeah, telling us about your story. That's my, my pleasure. Thanks for inviting me. Cheers, Mark. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye.